All right, guys, here we are today with the Yeber K2S. It's a new projector that I got in. It's a budget projector. It retails around $600. Sometimes you get it for around $400. We're going to take a look at it and see exactly what you get for your money. Now, Yeber did provide this for me free of charge, but it is not a paid review. This is going to be all of my thoughts on this particular projector. So you're going to want to stay tuned to the end to see exactly what I think. Now, if we take a look at the Yeber K2S, it does have one HDMI port, one USB port, one USB-C. It does have a headphone jack output as well as an AV input. And that uses just a 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter that comes in the package. There are a few buttons on the top, including power and volume, which I definitely appreciate. It also has that NFC logo, which you can use, of course, for your phone. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the user interface of the Yeber. Now, if you haven't been using the Yeber for a while, it goes to uh, this particular screen. Now you navigate the Yeber with a remote control, and this does come with just a standard IR remote control. However, it's not the only remote control it comes with, but more on that in just a minute. First, let's take a look at the interface. So as we take a look at the Yeber interface, we're gonna hear it make a noise every time we go to the screen. Not my favorite thing in the world. You do have some settings in here to adjust color and contrast. Now we are gonna go ahead and test those to see exactly what we got, but uh, you can go ahead and add Bluetooth to it if you want to. So add some Bluetooth speakers. And of course, it has your projection mode along with projection settings. It does do auto keystone and auto focus, which is really nice, but you will need the manual keystone some. It's not as good as uh, some of the other ones that I've used in the past. This does have a manual keystone. And as you notice, it does have a four point correction. Each one of those corners you can adjust to get fit your screen perfectly. Unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of this keystone because you can't really see where you're correcting to. If you can see in the top left hand corner, as I'm correcting this, it's very hard to see what's the edge of the screen. And that's because they didn't create a secondary border like most manual keystones have. So for me, I had to do this with the lights on so that I could really see where this border was lining up with the actual screen. This does have four different color modes, user, standard, vivid, and natural mode. One thing to keep in mind though, standard, vivid, and natural mode only adjusts the color temperature. And on user mode, you can adjust contrast, saturation, sharpness, and hue. Now I did mention that you get two remote controls and that's because of this Android TV. What Yeber decided to do is they decided to bypass the Netflix certification, which can be very hard for a beginning company to get from Netflix. So instead of getting Netflix certification, they actually include a Android TV dongle that sticks into the bottom of the projector. It's already installed for you. But by doing that, they went ahead and bypassed the need of getting this projector Netflix certified. Now, interestingly enough, even though it comes with that second remote control, the Gaber remote control actually does control this. So there's really no need for that second remote control unless you want to have something like voice control. And since this is Android TV, you can get all of your favorite apps on it, which is pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and do some testing so that we can figure out how it does performance wise. Now for this test, I went ahead and hooked up my laptop along with my calibration equipment, which I will go ahead and leave a link to down in the description if you want to pick some up yourself. And I hooked this up to my laptop to get an idea of exactly how accurate the color is. This was almost a tale of two halves. When I first went ahead and tested this, the gamma was really good. It was right at 2.2, which is exactly where I like it for these budget style projectors. Now, if we continue down that line, the contrast is actually the highest I've ever seen on any of these budget projectors as well. We're off to a really, really good start. However, if we continue down the line and we look closer into the gamma, we're gonna notice that the white balance is off quite considerably. In fact, all of the colors lean towards the blue. And you can also see that in the CEI graph. And if we keep digging in deeper, we're gonna notice that we're getting some very high delta errors with color accuracy because everything is leaning towards the blue. Uh, in fact, this is much higher than what I would like. The bare maximum, I'd like to see 10 and excellent would be under three. Unfortunately, this is over both of those. Now, the last thing that we wanted to take a look at was the color gamut. And this is where I was really disappointed. The color gamut on this projector is only 65% of Rec. 709. 
put that into perspective, before I had this projector, the lowest one that I'd ever tested was about 90% of Rec. 709. So we're not getting nearly the same amount of colors that we would get out of some of the other budget projectors that I've tested in the past. Now, some of you guys wanna actually see what this looks like in person, so let's go ahead and show you some of those video examples and show you what we're talking about. And this is where this is really impressive. We can see the contrast really well with the shadow detail. We can see all of the monster's claws back here. It's really good with the shadow detail. Definitely impressive in that manner. Right here, especially, you can see how much more blue there is. It's, it's going in and we're losing so much detail. We're seeing problems between the blue and the whites on Frozen. We're just not seeing the right, the right colors that we should be. And it's really unfortunate because it does such a great job with the contrast. The sound was actually designed by JBL and it's pretty good. It actually has some of the better sound that I've heard on a projector. And so I really commend Gaber for doing that. However, there are some things that you're gonna to wanna to think about. One of the reasons why it's so full sound is if you flip this over, you're gonna see two subwoofers. Uh, they almost look like little tang band subwoofers and they give you pretty good mid bass uh, and a little bit of bass on there as well. So good job with that. Unfortunately, this isn't a true stereo setup. If we take a look at the Yeber a little bit more in depth, we're gonna see that the speakers only fire on the right hand side. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when you're placing this. Now, as far as the fan noise goes, it is relatively loud. This is the actual fan noise from about a foot away. So another thing to think about is how loud this fan is. This projector is pretty far back. It's almost at my sitting area. And that fan is definitely noticeable, very noticeable. One of the louder fans that I've had and turning the brightness down didn't really seem to affect it that much. Now let's go ahead and see where we're going to place this on the leaderboard. I think I'm going to place this right underneath the Ultimia. Yeah, I think that's exactly where it goes. Uh, definitely not above the XG Mies. And I like the Ultimia a little bit better. It's got a wider color gamut there. So that's about where I think this one places. I want to know what you guys think. Where would you place this? Do you value the contrast more than the color gamut like me? If so, make sure to throw your comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help us out. All right, guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.